complete truth. What I mean is, everything that I published was honest. That doesn't mean I published everything. <laughs> Are you acquainted with the classical and modern fiction? As a reader, yes, I am. Classical and modern, and also as an actress. I uh, wouldn't want to bore the court with my credits, but... Have you ever read a novel entitled The Seven Minutes by J.J. Jadway? I have, sir. Have you read it more than once? I've read it many, many times. How recently have you read the book in its entirety? As recently as last night. Are you familiar with the section 3112 of the California Penal Code? I am. Do you know that the seven minutes is being charged as obscene matter under that section of the code? I do know that. Do you consider the seven minutes to be an obscene book? Uh, just a moment, Miss Cumberland. Your Honor, I object to defense counsel's question. No foundation has been laid to establish Miss Cumberland's qualifications to render such an opinion. And with all due respect to the acting abilities and other impressive credentials possessed by Miss Cumberland, I cannot imagine what bearing her opinion on the merits of this book could possibly have upon the proceedings. Your Honor, I'd like to approach the bench. Both attorneys shall approach the bench. Mr. Barrett, I'm deeply concerned with your present examination of Miss Cumberland. It appears you're seeking to elicit from this witness an opinion which she is not entitled to give. Mr. Duncan has properly interposed an objection which I mean to sustain. Your Honor, if I may interrupt for just a moment, I assure you that Miss Cumberland's testimony is critical to the defense case. I can, Your Honor, I feel the defense counsel is testing the court's patience. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Don't you come on, sir. Gentlemen, gentlemen, would you restrain yourselves from this bickering? Now, Mr. Barrett, I have the greatest admiration for Miss Cumberland as an actress but I fail to see what credentials she possesses which enables her to render an opinion concerning the seven minutes, unless, for example, she is a qualified literary expert, and apparently she is not, because you have not qualified her as such. Therefore, she cannot give an expert opinion. Your Honor, it is very... Just a moment, Mr. Duncan. I want to hear from the defense. I represent to you as an officer of the court that you will find this testimony to be extremely relevant and material. To the let him make an offer of proof as to the nature of the so-called material. Do you have an offer of proof to make? Your Honor, if I am forced to make an offer of proof at this time, the court is requiring me to disclose my defense to the prosecution in violation of my client's constitutional rights. This I respectfully refuse to do. But if the court will just bear with me, permit me a few more questions, I think you will readily see the relevance All right, all right, but I'm warning you, Mr. Barrett. If the testimony, in fact, is inadmissible or highly prejudicial to the prosecution, I will take strong measures to deal with this. Your Honor, may I Not be at this time, Mr. Duncan. If the evidence is not relevant and material, you may move to strike the testimony at the appropriate time. Now, let's proceed. Miss Cumberland, do you consider the seven minutes to be an obscene book? No, I do not. I consider it to be a highly moral book. Do you believe the author of this work was pandering to prurient interest, to a shameful or morbid interest in nudity and sex in writing this book, as the state charges? To which I object on the grounds that this witness is not qualified to answer the question. Mr. Duncan, I believe your objection to be well taken, but the court believes that the defense is entitled to some leeway in this area. Objection overruled. Uh, Mr. Barrett, will you please reframe the question? Ms. Cumberland. Do you believe the author was, in fact, pandering to a shameful and morbid interest in nudity and sex? I know for a fact that that author was not pandering to prurient interest. Your Honor, I move to strike from the record Miss Cumberland's conclusion and conjecture that the author was not, in fact, pandering to prurient interests. Obviously, this witness could have no personal knowledge of the author's true intentions. Uh, Mr. Barrett, I indicated that I would give you leeway. But, however, if you don't immediately get to your point, the court will sustain its own objection to your questions. Very well, Your Honor. I will proceed directly to the point. Ms. Cumberland, you stated that the book, The Seven Minutes, was not, in fact, written to appeal to prurient interest. May I inquire, how do you know? Because I'm intimately acquainted with the circumstances surrounding the creation and the publication of The Seven Minutes. Miss Cumberland, will you explain to the jurors and the court how you came by this intimate knowledge? Gladly. No person alive was closer or better acquainted with J.J. Jadway than I am. 
Scumberland, are you implying that you were present in Paris when J.J. Jadway wrote The Seven Minutes? I'm saying that I was in Paris when the book was written. Do you know the author's motivations for writing it? To which I object. The question calls for conclusion and speculation in that Miss Cumberland could not possibly have any personal knowledge of the author's true motivations for writing the seven minutes. Mr. Duncan, we are going to get on with this matter if it's the last thing we do. You will recall the court asked Miss Cumberland to explain to the jury how she has intimate knowledge of the circumstances under which the seven minutes was written. Now, the court will not tolerate any more interference of Mr. Barrett's questioning along these lines. Objection overruled. Mr. Barrett, will you proceed and ask another question? Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Cumberland, are you familiar with the testimony presented by the prosecution? Does this first-hand knowledge which you possess confirm or contradict the testimony given in this courtroom by the people's witnesses? My information about the real Jadway and the real purpose in writing and publishing this book completely and entirely contradicts the evidence so far presented in this court. You do understand that the previous witnesses were sworn gave their testimony under oath and risked facing a charge of perjury if they lied. They did not lie. They simply did not tell the truth, merely because they were ignorant of the truth. Let me explain. Everything heard in this courtroom until now about J.J. Jadway, and I am completely fluent with all of the testimony, has been the purest fiction. And this fiction was deliberately planned and perpetrated by the author for reasons involving the author's private life. Let me go directly to the salient point at hand. You indicated in earlier testimony that you had published your own autobiography, which was a bestseller, as I recall. Have you ever written or published any other books? Yes, I have. How many other books? One book. Was that book published under the name of Constance Cumberland? No, it was not. It was published under a pseudonym. Can you tell the court the title of that book and the pseudonym under which you wrote it? The book was The Seven Minutes by J.J. Jadway. I am J.J. Jadway. Order in the court! Order! Order! Order in the court! Ms. Cumberland, the court has already heard The Seven Minutes read aloud. So we might more clearly determine the significance of what we have already heard, would you mind telling us the themes and the symbols that you attempted to convey in writing the book? May I have a glass of water, please? Thank you. The seven minutes is composed of seven chapters, each chapter representing one minute in the mind of this young woman, Kathleen, who is lying on a bed having sexual intercourse with an unnamed, unseen man. It begins with a description of her thoughts and feelings for her male bed partner. Kathleen's mind reacts to the coupling on two levels. On the first, she records her immediate physical sensations, and on the second, inspired by her gradually mounting passion, 